After another big win on the road, the Saints are preparing to return to the Superdome, looking for that ninth straight win. Welcome to the Afternoon Wrap presented by Acme Oyster House. Hey everyone, I'm Cindy Robinson, joined by John DeShazer. Welcome to the Afternoon Wrap. Now, preparations are underway here at the Oshner Sports Performance Center for this Sunday at the Superdome. They are hosting the Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles, JD. Now, this team is getting exciting to watch, JD. What's it been like seeing them face some tough opponents? Well, I mean, you don't often see a team in the NFL run off an eight-game winning streak. It's a difficult league in which to do that, and the Saints offense has been phenomenal during that stretch. The defense has come along, actually, during that stretch also, but the offense has been phenomenal, averaging, you know, 36 points a game and really being extremely efficient, whether it be in the red zone, whether it be in terms of the drive, just scoring on 60-plus percent of the drives during the game, which is a phenomenal number. So it's been really fun to watch because, We've seen the Saints struggle a couple of years back when they were 7-9, 7-9, 7-9, and now it seems like, I don't want to say they figured it out and put it together, but they're certainly in a really good run here. Speaking of that offense, the Saints are looking to add depth to that wide receiver core. Now, last week, Des Bryant was signed to the team, and then that was short-lived with the unfortunate Achilles injury. He came in and worked out initially with Des Bryant, I mean with Brandon Marshall, who this week the Saints have signed. Now, Brandon Marshall added to that wide receiver core. What can you expect, J.D.? Well, he's a big, huge body. He's a veteran receiver. Uh, he knows how to play in the NFL. And um, a lot of people might have thought he slowed down a little bit, but he said he can't went to camp injured. Uh, he didn't really feel like himself until maybe three or four games into the season. So he's a guy who feels like he's got a lot to prove. Uh, Brandon uh, Brandon Marshall has not played in an NFL playoff game in his entire career. Mm -hmm. He's a 13-year vet. So he joined the right team if he wants to try to get to the playoffs. You don't want to put the cart before the horse, but obviously he joined a really hot team. And we caught up with Brandon Marshall in the locker room. Yeah, I think that's a wide receiver's dream. You know, it's exciting. Um, then also you got you know, Mike T over there, who's a beast and a running back. So, you know, it's a complete team and, um, you know, they're on the roll right now. You know, because I've been in, you know, pro style offenses. I've been in offenses similar to this. Um, I've been in a wildcat a little bit in Miami. So I've done it all, you know. So to me, it's just, you know, it's offense, right? Um, you know, and I, I think, you know, what's really helping me right now is, you know, I've been in this system for two years. Uh, with C Coach Cromer, who was who spent a lot of time here, uh, so the running game was identical. And then Coach Trustman spent time here, you know, interning and just being a shadow and you know other things that he was doing. So we did a lot of the things. You know, when you talk about the splits, those little details, um, you know, are the same. But then there's obviously things that you know are different in the playbook. You know, so. Uh, there's some things that it's just memory, right? So just once you pick up the terminology, you know, you understand where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. Now the team seems to be excited about the addition of Brandon Marshall, especially Drew Brees, who's familiar with the veteran wide receiver. Yeah, I'm excited about him. Um, known him for a long time. Um, our paths have crossed, um, doing a bunch of things uh, off the field, um, playing a Pro Bowl together um, back when it was in Hawaii. <laughs> um, so I don't know how many years ago, but uh, known of him for a long time. Um, really heard a lot of good things about him, and um, been a fan of his. Just watching him on film, he's a uh, he's a very smart veteran guy who um, very fluid. Um, I've seen him in a lot of different offenses. Really be successful both as an outside receiver as an inside receiver. Um, I think he's very versatile. There's a lot of things he can do. He's a big target, you know, so big catching radius. Um, and just watching him run today was, was pretty impressive. So I'm excited about having him. All right, J.D., first day of practice. What's the updates on the injury front? Yeah, pretty extensive injury list. But what we really know is Teron, Teron Armstead, left tackle, he was not at practice during the portion that we saw. We know he left the game with an injury to his arm. Uh, certainly we'll update his status as much as we know. Uh, Andrews Pete was not on the practice field with the team during the portion we saw, as well as defensive end Marcus Davenport. And we expect Marcus to be back maybe a week or two from now, but none of those three guys were out there. However, the offensive linemen who were there, uh, Max Unger, the center, uh, right tackle Ryan Ramchek, uh, left guard 
uh, right guard Larry Warford and tackle Jermon Bushrod. All those guys left the practice field probably for vet maintenance days uh, because most of those guys were on the injury report as non-injury related. So that's basically a rest day, a vet a vet day. So, you know, we'll continue to monitor as the week goes along, but certainly I don't think there are a lot of concerns with those guys who left practice while we were watching. Make sure you guys stay updated on uh, with the injury report on NewOrleansSaints.com. And until tomorrow, I'm Cindy Robinson, joined by John DeShazer.